questions. The um, reason she looks taller than me right now is she's literally sitting on her feet. She's not taller than me. Everyone thinks she is, she's not. Is that necessary? Yes, 100%, because it looks... So we have... I'm gonna uh, sit on my feet. People always ask us about being a blended family, and then I always get, usually on TikTok and Instagram, but now I've been getting it on YouTube too, can you guys do a video about being a blended family? So I have some questions that we get asked all the time. Here, I will sit on my butt there, crisscross applesauce style. So we're gonna answer some of those questions first. But before any of that, we're gonna tell you, I feel like we should explain like really quickly how we met because we did a whole video on that, so mm -hmm. I will link that to this video, but like one minute explanation of how we met. Our kids went, uh, so my two boys and Peter went to the same daycare and we saw each other, never talked really. She uh, harassed me at a bar and six months later I stalked her out on Facebook and we hung out one time and have been together every day since. That's pretty much the, the cliff notes of it. of it. Yeah, it's a cliff notes of yeah. it. Yeah, we met at the kids' daycare. Mm -hmm. She hit on me. There. She made the first moves. That's how we met. We met at a local bar, and Dave slid into my DMs. We um, didn't meet at a local bar. Like, just, well, we knew each uh, other from the daycare, but we she like harassed me at the local bar. Yes. Um, <laughs> she fell in love with me from a distance. So we're just gonna talk about. We're gonna answer some questions too. So I have some. I'm looking on my phone because I asked you guys some questions, and I like wrote down some of the most asked ones. So first, I just wanted to go over, like, that's how we became a blended family. Yes. And one of the things we always, like, how did we know was the right time to introduce the kids to We each waited other. a while. Yeah. We waited a while. Like, and really for us, it was easier because, so, well, first we should just explain the dynamic. So it's me and Dave. I came with Peter, who is going to be 12 next month. Dave came with Nico, who's 10, and Luca, who's 8. Yeah. And then we had Ava together, who's 3. So she's yeah. probably not going to yeah. be... So, but when we met, Peter was 5, going on 6, when we first started dating. Yeah. Uh, Nico was 3, going on 4. And, and they Luca went to just the same... Two. Yeah. But they went to the same daycare together previously. Mm -hmm. So they saw each other in passing, pretty much just Peter and Nico. So yeah. they knew they of weren't each the other. same they weren't in the same class, no, but they two Yeah, but they were def they were no, I think they were one. One separate? One separate. Yes, yeah, then, one separate, yeah, for a while. Um so that's so but yeah, we waited a while, so it was just us for a while and then I wanna say March. So yes, we, we really started, not that long. it was three months. Yeah. It was three months. That's a decent but amount of time. But we didn't tell them pretty much. Like it wasn't like, oh, you're going to meet mommy's new boyfriend or you're going to meet daddy's new girlfriend. It was yeah. just like, oh, this is my friend. She's coming over with her kids or like, we yeah. didn't actually, we didn't come over. We did activities together. Yeah, like, we, we did. Yeah. We, we would go to the park. That was like our big thing. We would meet at the park all the time. It'd yeah. be like, that would the be our would date. Play. The kids would play. Mm -hmm. And so they really played great together. So we yeah. didn't really, for us, it wasn't like a matter, or for me at least, it wasn't a matter of like, is he the one? Like, can he meet my son yet? It was more or less like, all right, I'm hanging out with this guy. Like he has kids similar age. Like we could all be friends. Yeah. So, cause I do take that very seriously, but it almost like, it worked out well. She's too much in love with me to, to put her feet in the ground. Which I can't, I can't blame her. I can't. Yeah. So yeah, so that's how they all, and the kids honestly all got along really well. Mm -hmm. Like They did, yeah. They played really well, they adored each other, and then we finally like told them, I don't even know if we like sat down and told them, it was just kind of like they saw, because then we were together all the time. All the time. Forgive me for yawning. He was up late last night because he was um, salting the roads. Yeah, snow plowing, salting, all that fun stuff. So, um, okay, so how do you deal with conflicting parenting styles in a blended family? <sighs> how do you deal with it? Ooh. That's really hard. It's hard. We went to counseling, like therapy. Um, it was pretty, I guess, like marriage, marital therapy. It was but a it couples was, therapy. Yeah, couples therapy, for, <sighs> but it was also for being a blended family. And I remember what she told us, like, once you're... Dave's divorced so yeah. it's like the when you get remarried 
once you're like divorced once, the like statistics of like when you get remarried, getting divorced again is even higher. 75%. Yeah, I, I forget the actual numbers. And then she said, yeah. and then when you have a blended family on top of that, yeah. it like just skyrockets. Put you in the 90% level, yeah. Yeah, so she said, um, our therapist at the time was saying that blended families are really tough. She sees a lot of them because of that. Yeah. There's so much. So yeah, so going back to it, There's... how do we deal with conflicting parenting styles? I don't think there's a way to deal with it. I think it's just one of those things where you just hope to exist, to like coexist and parent. And to kind of learn like, okay, I might not agree with that parenting choice, but like that's how he does. I don't know. It's hard because you, we fall in the trap of separating the kids. Like I will discipline Peter mm. and he'll discipline the boys. And like we fall in that trap of like having almost separate, I feel like sometimes. Yeah. Which is a conflict in itself. It's, yeah. Like yeah. It, it's, it should be one household rule yeah. but because, but I feel like even if it wasn't a blended family, I feel like that's hard with husband and wives too. If like the husband's always working the mom's, the wife's home. And she says no and just puts the kid in like a timeout, takes away thing. And the husband comes home and is like, Yes and no, but it's, it becomes like when those families are together, it's become like a, you're, you're like a united front. But the problem that you have with blended families is when that happens, you get very defensive um, and you go into like this protection mode because like my boys, when I got separated and divorced, my boys were my crutch. And the same thing with her. I know that, you know, through the relationships that she had and all the bad scenarios and, you know, until she found her perfect man in me, Peter was her crutch. He was her, you know, her rock. Like he could, he was what she went to, to feel home, like to, to feel close. Like, there, you know, there's a bunch of issues where she wasn't staying home and she, you know, she was staying all these different places. So... It's, it's difficult. It really is. It's difficult. And then there's never, there's no two days that are the same. So in the short answer to that question, how do we deal with it? We're still learning how to deal with conflicting parenting styles. And we're, yeah. we're still learning our parenting style together too. So it's just, yeah, that's hard. Um, how, that's a different dynamic. Yeah. So we're learning like two things since yeah. we have Ava all together. Because we're trying to raise Ava together. So how can I help my children adjust to a blended family? So for us, the initial was great. Like smooth sailing, the kids all got... <sighs> yes, it was. And and I don't mean... It was 100%. It was only because it was like, oh, you know, Why like... You roll your eyes at that? No, I wasn't rolling my eyes. I was saying like, yeah, it was. It was smooth because we didn't like... We didn't treat it as that. We treated it almost as like, oh, we're gonna go have a play date, or oh, it was yeah. like, and that created another conflict. Yeah, so initially it was great, and then once I think everyone started realizing what was going on, that this wasn't just like a friend, or like we then go home, like mm -hmm. now our home's together, yeah. that's when a lot of conflict arose, and mm -hmm. we honestly put all three of our kids in therapy. Mm -hmm. um, it was really hard. So for my son, he was an only child. So his biggest thing was like, he loved his brothers, loved playing with them. But like when he was done, he was like, all right, right mom, like I want them to go home. I want mommy to myself a hundred percent. So he never had to share my attention. And so that was really tough. And then I just think for like the boys, it was more or less like I was single for longer. Like Peter was used to it. So for the boys, it was just more or less like learning like, okay, it's yeah. not daddy and like their mom anymore. It's like mm -hmm. a new person and like this is our yeah. other family. So the, the one person, like the, I always said this, is like Luca was so young it didn't affect him. Because mm -hmm. she's been with me since he turned th three? Turned two. Turned two. Turned two. Turned, yeah, he just turned two. He just turned two. So, I mean, she was through... The baby diaper, the potty training, like all mm. of that with him. And it was so funny. She was always so super close with Luca. So, you know, it was, that was like great, like a great transition. And Nico, uh, you know, he's a little older. He got time with me and my ex. So his, that's always been his hang up, really. I think, you know, he, he as he's gotten older, it's been tougher for him. But Nico was great at first. And then when, same thing with Peter. 
I think yeah. both of them, once they realized. Yeah, they both kind of dug their heels in the ground. Yeah. So that was tough and it wasn't easy and there's like so many moving parts that aren't all. Still is tough, yeah. Yeah, that aren't all on the same page. Mm. So it's just one of those things you kind of, I mean, I don't even think like, I don't want to say we're not qualified, but like we're I'm we're just doing like these most commonly asked questions, but yeah. we're still learning and navigating. We're still in we're therapy definitely now. not yeah. I mean, we're still trying to figure We just we just started back up yeah. just because it, it is so hard and we did it for a while and it did help. We learned a lot of tools, so it's just good to check back in. It's good to have a neutral party. Yeah. I and always... with my son, I have to say he was in therapy. He was the first one that went into therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, and he really did great. He learned, I mean, he still has meltdowns and freakouts and now he's like almost in that teenage stage, oh, yeah. but it really did help him having like someone outside yeah. to talk to. How do you handle jealousy and resentment between siblings in a blended family? So I, so that again is more my son, I feel like. Yeah. Peter was, because it was just me and him for so long, like I did everything just me and Peter. He was put on a pedestal. And then he. There was a common, there was always this common saying that she would say, like, well, I'm not going to let my son miss out. And it was. You say it too, though, towards. Mm -hmm. You do it all the time towards Nico. You just did it the other day with something. You literally just. Oh, with the goggles. Because one came in like a fancy packaging, and, one's, and you were like, what are those for Peter? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It still happens. I still do it. Yeah. And I was just like, what? Like, no, I just, or I literally got three different goggles and they all came in different packages, but I just ordered, like, there was no rhyme. No three, rhyme or reason. No rhyme or reason. They're all going to go in the bag. The kids are going to We're gonna still so super sent. We're very yeah. hyper And we've been together six years, yeah. married four. Almost four. Oh, almost four? No, we're married four. Oh, yeah. shit. This is five years. Yeah, almost five. I love her uh, so much, though. So. <laughs> So yeah, so that, it was definitely Peter and that's why like with therapy that kind of really helped him and just knowing like, just kind of, I don't know, like him knowing like, okay, we're, I just had to keep reiterating the fact that like we're family now, like you're family, but like they fight like regular siblings. They fight like brothers. Yeah. I like, mean, and look, we don't say stepbrothers, like I don't no, say No, they don't it. call each other, like Peter will never say, oh, my stepbrothers are coming over. He'll be like, oh, that's my brother. Like yeah. they don't know no. each other as no stepbrothers no and i think that's to me that was one of the most important things yeah because and they've never said that like no i've never heard them say step never no and even with matthew the boys call him brother but yeah, like so dave's boys have a, a bro stepbrother, yeah stepbrother named um but he's older so he's older yeah but they call you know the same thing so i think it's great i mean and the, the three of them regardless of whether or not they're step brother, when it comes to ava yeah, they're very right. They are just, they love her. They love her Ava almost was like the missing piece. Yeah, she was, 100%. That like kind of bought us together as a family and almost like bought the kids all together. Like, okay, like now we're all brother and sisters. Yeah. I mean, Ava is definitely like, the boys are here and Ava's like up on that's the, the problem. tower. That's the issue. <laughs> she's like that with them too, though. Look, and that's great. And she's my princess. Um, yeah, but she'll always be my princess. Yeah. That's okay. I love Let's her. see. The next question: What challenges do you encounter when getting to <laughs> what challenges do you encounter when getting to know the extended family of my partner, of your partner? This, this is fun. so. This I don't want to like say too much on, but mm -hmm. like when I first so me and Peter's dad were separated longer or for a longer amount of time when I met Dave. Like when I met Dave, I dated someone after Peter's dad. Like it wasn't new or fresh. She's engaged to somebody else. We don't need to bring that up. Yeah, we do. That's okay. a part of the story. So yeah. So many boyfriends. I didn't have many boyfriends. Many boyfriends. I literally had two, both for long periods of time. She was a time. serial dater. Both for long periods of time. Both who wanted to marry me. No, I was the lucky one. And then I had Dave. <laughs> But, um, so it was a longer thing. So Peter's dad, his name's Pete. He was just, we, at that point, we were still in like rocky. Yeah. Our relationship was still like a little rocky, like just navigating things yeah. together. But by the time, like he was used to it almost. So when he met Dave, like they always, he was always respectful. Like mm -hmm. the two of them always got along. 
um, Dave never like stepped over. Like I don't yeah, think I don't, Pete I don't. ever felt like not int int intimidated. Is not no, the right no, word. Encro I've never encroached on their parenting. Yeah, like I don't think Pete ever felt like this guy's taking over as my job as dad. Yeah. Like the two of them work together pretty well, and also my son's father is very. Um, he just kind of stays away, like stay not stays away, but like stays out of things. Like he doesn't. It's just he like just he lets does her his, do whatever yeah. she wants. That's he what, does that's his what thing. She says I, that. I have like she has a hundred and yeah, like total control. I take care of Peter's schooling, his doctor, his home life, like all that. And Peter's dad's a great, great. Oh dad. no, yeah, no, I'm. They're not discounting Pete at all. I think. Yeah. Pete, Pete and I, our relationship over the last six years, seven years, whatever it's been, is yeah. It's only grown. It's like we. I don't. I don't. I never had anything. Really, like any ill intent? No. I mean, look, there was a couple things that happened when we first started dating, but I don't. To me, I was like, look, man, that's history. Bygones yeah. be guy. I, I can get over things very easily. And Pete's family, Peter's like other side of the family. Oh, yeah, they're fucking great. Yeah. So there's never that. So on the other hand, though, when I met. They were still so new. Yes. So when I first met his I was ex, not divorced yet. Yeah, they were just like going, getting the divorce process finalized. So like when me and, when she realized like I was going to be around the kids, we sat and got coffee and like, yeah. I was like, oh, well like, why do you ever say anything like not nice about her? She seems great. I really like her. Remember when I came yeah. home from coffee? I was just like, oh, uh, she's like, yeah. I like her. Oh, yeah. Look, we're, every, everyone's different. There's too many different personalities and there's too many. Her. Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> there's too many different personalities. And over the years, there's been things where she's, she's made it a point to cause problems. And you know, in reality, there's some wounds that need to heal. Yeah, she was not so nice. She was and not nice Unfortunately for, a while. for me, I am a very stubborn and spiteful person, and I hold grudges. Yeah. So there's only so many times that I could be crossed or like, you know, be treated bad. I'm not an aggressive person. I won't like go out and be like scream at her in a parking lot. Like that's not me. But I would just rather like I'll shut down. Yeah. And I'm very stubborn now that, like, if she wants to have a relationship, like, my walls are completely up where I'm, like, you've crossed my, like, you've, like, too many yeah. times. So, th that's been, like, one of the biggest hurdles in our marriage. And then also with, like, Dave's mom was put in a bad situation yeah. because it's, like, you know, that's still the mother of his kids like it just it put yeah. so many so many what like hurdles yeah, it, came because so of that. my kids are my mom's first grandchildren yeah my son nicholas is what peter is in her family he was this you know he was the prince we call him the prince still so she had this like she almost felt like she was betraying his mother in the beginning not realizing that it was just yeah. And look, it's it's not easy. They, you know, they everyone has to go through some type of transition. There's one person that just it didn't matter, didn't years didn't fucking make a difference. And luckily, I don't talk to that person anymore. Oh um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, who's that? Yeah, yeah. There's no. I mean, I see some people like, and I think it's one of those things that it just takes time. So like in the beginning, I was like, great, we're all gonna be a happy family. Like it's you're gonna hit road bumps. Yeah, because it's like you you know you have conflicts as a couple, and then you have conflicts as parents, and yeah. then you, there's other dynamics now. It's like, all right, well, I'm having a conflict as a co-parent, and she's then getting defensive because I'm getting annoyed. And then even like planning things though too, like holidays, like yeah. that was a big conflict too because it's like I'm a planner, like I want to know in advance. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, the beginning of the month, let's figure out what we're doing for Christmas. Yeah. So because then also not only do you have your family, like we have like us in this family but then dave has his parents i have my parents mm -hmm. so it's like for christmas and then like you also have the other person so yeah. it's like now you're at like board our house my in-laws my my parents you know my ex like so you mm -hmm. have so many moving parts and it just gets frustrating or even like school decisions or sports you want to sign the kids up for sports like it's just or yeah. vacations like you want to plan a vacation and like it's like does this date work like no does this date like uh, yeah so it's, it's like you can't just make like we can't just make a decision me and him and be like oh you know next week let's pull the kids out from school and like take them away i mean even though we are doing that next yeah, week we but it was that. planned way in advance yeah we but like we in. can't just do s no there's no spontaneity and but there's no off, like also if we say something yeah. it only exists in this household like just because we say something once they yeah once it, they go back 
like to their other house it it's, might, yeah, it might not tough. exist we can't expect the other people to be like oh yeah. you know they got in trouble so no video games and then yeah. it's like once they go to their other house and i think that's why blended families fail so many because it's not like okay hey you're we all come with baggage right whether it's emotional physical you know we had we had both so we go into this relationship <laughs> We go in this relationship and now, okay, well, here we are trying to build a relationship between us or a marriage between us, right? Whatever it is. Well, now we have, I have to build this relationship with her son's father. She has to build this relationship with my son's mother and then their partners. And it's just, you know what it is? There's a lot of, there's, and when you have so many different personalities, like it's just, it's so tough. It really is so tough. And I understand. And. I gotta be honest, I mean, look, there's been times where we've been ready to just call it quits. Many times. Yeah, it gets really hard. It gets that point. Uh, then the next question. How do you keep your blended family strong and healthy? We're, chill we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, we're working on it. Therapy, like before I met oh, yeah. Dave, I was always anti-therapy. Once I put Peter in therapy and then like I started going myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, it does really help to have an outside party that's not your family, not your friend, has like yes. no, that can just help you literally give you the tools and navigate like how yeah. your fam feeling. And then it's not the worst thing for the kids either to have someone to help them because this is new to all of us. Like, I don't know how to explain like, hey, we had you, but mommy and daddy, you know aren't together anymore so we're gonna raise mm -hmm. you separately but now i fell in love with dave and <laughs> i fell in love with dave love and him? yes honey and now we have ava who nice. lives with us all the time and doesn't have to share households like mm -hmm. so there's so much so like i really think just to keep the family strong and healthy therapy um and check i've been seeing yeah so I've been seeing a therapist for longer than we've been together. I've seen yeah. the same therapist for nine years, eight mm -hmm. years, nine years, something like that. I grew up in a very, you know, you don't talk to other people, whatever. Like, we both. Yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, my family, we talked about things internally, but like we didn't talk about things outside because, you know, that was an outside opinion. When I got into therapy, I didn't take advantage of it. I didn't utilize it. And I went through therapists very quickly in the beginning. And then I found one that fit me perfectly. And I have literally been with her since before I got divorced, before I got separated. It was just one of those things that like, it doesn't matter what you think, like you can't make a, like sometimes you just can't make a decision or you can't, you can't have a level head because there's too many sides. There's too many people. There's too many cooks in the kitchen. There's too many, you know, it's like, it's one of those things like, I just need somebody who doesn't know a fucking thing about me or my family and just needs to help me clear all the clutter because that's really all it is. It's just, this is how, this is what you need to do. Like I've found out so many things. I'm conflict avoided 100%. I fabricate little things because I want to avoid conflict, which has created so much conflict between my wife and I. Little, little, little yeah, like it's, you know, in the butt. so stupid stuff. Um, how do you deal with the guilt that comes with being a part of a blended family? I think that's hard. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's hard on both of us in different ways. For me, it was the guilt of having my son be an only child to now it's like I, he has to share me with Dave because now I'm in like a marriage and a relationship. He has to share me with siblings. Um, so for me, it was that guilt that I felt like I used to do so many one-on-one -on -one things. And then I think for Dave, it was, it was really hard because I have Peter full time. So his boys aren't here. So here he is moving me and Peter into like, we moved into Dave's home initially before we did this one to get like, yeah. before we knocked that down and built this one together. And yes. now this is my house. This is um, so before, what? <laughs> before that, but so yeah, I think it was hard because then it's like his boys now leave and now Peter's here full time. And it's like, you know, if we're doing something like having dinner together or something like that. Like, I think it got easier because Ava's here, but it's still like in the beginning. It still hurts. Yeah, in the beginning, it definitely stunk a lot because it was like. Yeah. His. She could always tell, like, she would always be like, oh, you wish the boy were here. And I'm like, yeah, I do because I have so much love for her. I have so much love for us as like a, as a big unit that like, I want that just, you like, when you're in a brand, you want that all the time. Like, especially when it was, when you were, had that feeling, like that great feeling, because you just come out of something that hurts so bad. Like when you leave a relationship with a child, it hurts. 
it hurts so bad and you finally find like this cohesive unit where it's like oh my god this is the feeling that I've always wanted like we're all together so I'm very yeah it still hurts it's still tough it's just one of those things that you have to like that's what I mean, not to say that we're not qualified, but we're like going through. We're definitely not qualified. We're not qualified. <laughs> we're still going, like I always get these questions because you guys see highlight reels of us. Like a lot, oh, and another question I always get is why you don't see the boys as much. I get yeah. that all the time, especially on my Instagram. So that's pretty much out of respect for their mother and yeah. like her wishes. Like this was my decision to put myself in front of. Yeah the camera and for on TikTok, on Instagram, like that's my decision, it's not the kids. That's why you see Ava the most because yeah, she's, she's little ours, can... and she wants to be a part of it. Like if she wants to go in the other room, I'm gonna, I mean, she's three, I can't control what that girl does. No. But like even Peter, like if he's around and wants to be in it, but I'm never gonna like force him and be like, Peter, you have to be on this video. And half the time when all the kids are here together, you'll see a clip of them having breakfast, but then after that they're they don't together. want to be in the videos anyway. Yeah. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They're doing their own thing anyway. But yeah, it was a. Um, I mean, it was something we had to discuss with the other half because as our channel grew and yeah. stuff, and I think she saw a TikTok, and it just so happened to be like they're never in a TikTok, and it just so happened to be one that my son literally was. Do you remember it? We were in the McDonald's drive-through. <laughs> Oh and I decided God. to pull out my phone and I'm like, okay, Peter, what do, you, Mick gang bang. What, what do you want to order? And he goes, the Mick Gang Bang. The Mick Gang Bang. And like the boys are like, yeah, that sounds good. And I, I was like, do you know what that, I was like, do you know what that is? It was so... And that was it. Like we didn't, like no part of us were going to be like, hey, that, like I had no idea that, I, like I was like, what the, He was like, what? it's a secret menu. And a he, Mick Gang, and just so you know, there is an item. I don't know why it's called that way, but it's literally a double cheeseburger with two McChickens on top. Yes. It's called a McGangbang. Yeah. But so I was just like, oh my God, this is too funny not to post it. And then unfortunately, that was the one video she that saw. That was the one she, she saw. Like, That's yep. not. Oh boy. Boy, did I. My ears were hurting that day. So we just, you know, and the kids are all young, like yeah. safety wise. Like there's no reason to show. Yeah. So that is why, you know, and it's just one of those things again, like social media is also new, like navigating. That's all another thing. Well, that's it. It's like we get a lot of nice people that reach out to us. Yeah. And we get a lot of really cool people that, that comment and, and reach out and watch our videos. But then we also get some really weird people. And yeah. the kids, you know, it's just, it's it's too touchy. Yeah. Way too touchy. But we're going to have to wrap this video uh, up. Because is she calling me or you? She's calling you. My princess is calling me. So if there's any other things that you want us to answer, just leave it in the comments below. But just know like if you have a blended family, it's tough. And like I said before, our stuff that we post is literally a highlight reel. Like you don't see the kids fighting and me being like, hey, let me post this on my like yeah. YouTube or TikTok because you don't I'm see probably, the meltdowns I'm probably the screaming at them yes. and then or Dave's yelling at them and then me and him were mad at each other yep. because one yep. of us yelled at the kids yep. all we're together because yep. we're mm -hmm. hypersensitive. And then we have a fight. So what you guys see is like, oh look, open swim with the family. Everyone's laughing and giggling. Yeah. And then the meltdown about chicken fingers happens yeah. after. Yeah. Or can I get a shake? And yeah. it's like, no <gasps> shake. And then I want a shake. Yeah. So that's, you guys don't see all that. Well, so just know it's there. It's, it's there. Just, those are like the, the behind the scenes. Behind we the have scenes. four children together. I know people are like, that's with that one video of, of us having any more children. Like we have four together. We had yeah. to build this giant house because we didn't have enough room for all six of us inside a little I, I don't know thousand. how we fit it all fit in that house. We had a place. thousand square foot ranch. It was three bedroom, one bathroom, and we fit six people in it. Yeah. Ten, right. 10 to 12 times a month. We gotta go get that girl. Yeah. So we appreciate you guys reaching out. Uh, like, subscribe, keep up, comment, and uh, let us know what you want to talk about next. We can talk about romance. We can talk about anything. You really want to make my wife awkward? Well, we can talk about sex. It makes her so awkward. I love it. Goodbye. Thank you.